Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Mediocre Podcast. My name is Nick Howard, and today we are joined by my good friend Chris Desmond. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing fabulous, thank you. Yes, well, Chris, I'd like to ask you some questions today about politics and. That sounds incredibly boring, Nick. Huh. Well, if you let me finish the dang sentence, I'll be talking about the corruption in politics, Chris. All right, Nick, whatever you say. Yes, people in politics are corrupt. In fact, let's look at something recent. You know about the Flint water crisis? Well, of course I do. Well, their problems were ultimately spawned from their city officials. Really? How so? They, the city officials, knew that Flint's water was toxic long before they started using it as their water source. Yet, they still said it was completely safe to drink. That's what I heard what happened, but then again, it's also hard to believe it did that much damage. I know, I wouldn't believe it either. Okay, to prove what you're trying to say, I found an article from The Guardian that will discuss the points that you are trying to prove. Okay, sounds good. So in this article, it describes that most of this corruption in politics is caused by the amount of power that they have in their position. Am I right? Oh yeah, it happens all the time. In fact, most of the presidential candidates are corrupt. Really? Is this true? Absolutely. Wow, I didn't even know that. Well, it's true. Well then, here is another article from The Intercept, and with me is Jeremiah Reed, and he is going to explain that there are more factors in politics that lead to corruption. Really? Hello, Jerry. Now, in this article, what is it trying to say? Well, Nick and Chris, in this article, a man named Barney Frank said, We are the only people in the world required by law to take large amounts of money from strangers, and then act as if it has no effect on our behavior. So this article interprets that money is a big factor in political corruption. It makes sense. Money can give you power. Also that money can make you very greedy. And what really stinks is that we'll have to use money for everyday life. Anyway, thank you Jeremiah for coming here and I hope to see you again. No problem, man. I hope to see you again also. Now I am at the point where what you're trying to say that power in politics lead to corruption is so far true, and what I have is one last article from NPR where it will sum up what you are trying to prove. Really? Explain. Well, in this article it says, politics, power, and more money than ever can create an environmental right for corruption. In this article, it's saying that money and power are pretty much the building blocks for political corruption. Because of that, the power and the money would go straight to their heads, and they would do the most unspeakable tasks. It would make sense that those two things would go to their heads. Huh. So going through all that, this is what you think about this topic? Yes, that's what I believe in. So after going through all those articles, what you're saying is that in politics, the power can corrupt those political people. But is it just the power? Is it also the person? The money? What is the source? And is it possible that there's even more factors that lead to corruption in politics? The possibilities can be endless. Well, what we know now is that all three, power, people, and money. Well, I guess the logical thing we should do is that if any of us go into politics, we should be aware of what we're doing for both the people and the government. I can agree to that, Nick. So, after going through all that, I'd say that about wraps up our time here. Thank you for coming here, Chris. Anytime, Nick. Goodbye. And with that, I'm Nick Howard from the Mediocre Podcast, and I will see you guys later. Maybe. Probably not. Well, see ya.